Hello, dear friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We have come with more news and updates on this very channel. Yes, today is a briefing of the U.S. by our Prime Minister. Many people are contributing and they need to be briefed. The achievements, the things acquired, how they are being used, what we need and what we don't need. Need to be told to those that are responsible enough to stand by our Prime Minister in this Biafra liberation. Yes, please, I want you to listen to our Prime Minister, the questions and the encouragement given to him. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Cabinet members that are here. The, uh, the Liazen representatives from Europe, Asia, Africa. I welcome every one of you to this uh, uh, town hall meeting to brief Biafras in the United States. Our every two weeks achievement and update. Because of the phase we are into in the liberation of Biafra, it is very imperative that those of you in the United States working day and night to see the progress of this government be briefed. So you know that uh, the movement you are part of, the progress we are making, and the plan we have for the next two weeks. The last time I had this town hall meeting with you, I made it very clear that as a result of the propaganda from the Nigeria state and the difficulties we are facing, especially in disseminating information and, of course, creating awareness to our people back home, that I promise that the Biafra uh, Satellite TV before coming back today, will be live in Biafra land. I also promise that before this today, we are going to have the voice of Biafra satellite radio. And today I have come to inform all of you in the United States that the Biafra, voice of Biafra satellite TV is live in Biafra land. Good luck. Not only that, I've also come to inform all of you that the voice of Biafra Satellite Radio 97.5 FM is also alive in Biafra land. Before this today, please, so, um, yes, yeah, so our, our next uh, agenda is to see that this satellite radio transmitted transmitters are scattered across Biafra land and uh, you know i promise that it is going to be uh, we're going to focus more on the coastal uh, state uh, at this point uh, but because we we have uh you know uh, previously used some transmitters in the hinterland and so I wanted the IT technical department to focus on, uh, you know, bringing those transmitters back to life. And then the new transmitters will now channel to the coastal state before we, from there, you know, push to the hinterland. So today, the uh, voice of Biafra satellite uh, uh, radio uh is live in a bony state and uh and uh, gradually the uh, other uh broadcasting transmitters will be reimbursed reimbursed and uh, they will be live in few days time then we will start installation of new new uh transmitters in other states until we cover the 40 state of Biafra and this idea of 40 state of Biafra, all of you remember that last two years, 
we started uh, this uh, radio project and then we were not on satellite so that was a big difference between then and now and the reason why we put the radio uh, voice of biafra radio on hold after the launching uh two years ago was because we uh believed that we needed to do more of action uh work and then the radio and the tv will come uh in later days and that later days is now so we've been able to finish the structure of the government both the security the liberation army the biafra resistance fighters and as the activities of this biafra defense force are going on in biafra land we need to keep our people aware of the activities of those defending them so it is very important that we have this radio station and the tv station as well which is covering the entire sub-sahara africa so if you are you know in any part of the sub-sahara africa you will have access to watch the, Bia the voice of biafra satellite tv which is on 247 as i'm talking to you the tv is live so uh this is one of the uh uh updates i'm bringing to the U united states to biafra in the united states this evening and we still have a lot of work to do also this is very necessary because of our ongoing self-referendum everybody you could remember that we have embarked on this self-referendum which is online voting we need as many votes as possible and i want everybody to understand that this is a collective task that we must do so those of you can individually sponsor many uh you know uh private individuals to help in voting it is very very important like i have always said we don't care how these votes are coming in because we are going to defend it at the end of the day and in case anybody is concerned about the pattern and the way this vote is being carried out being carried out then we'll be talking about how to conduct you know a more whatever how they, however they want it a uh, referendum but for now it is in our power to decide as a government how this referendum is being conducted it is in our power to decide and whoever that is not happy with the way we are conducting the referendum will also do us good to bring in the united nation and they will conduct it by themselves to their own satisfaction but for us we are very very okay with the system and the pattern of this voting so far and we are very very happy with the results so far so the first stage of the voting is going to end in may when this when the first stage of the voting ends we will now look at our progress where we feel we need to do some amendment and we are going to go to the second stage of voting and i want everybody to understand that because of the disenfranchisement in the voting because we are using electron electronic means the outcome or the turn up of the voting may not be what we expect so but what we are looking at is to get the highest percentage from the four million people that voted during the last presidential election that's our target we are not targeting to get 20 million or 70 million or 80 million because it is not going to be possible because of the disenfranchisement in this voting the government threat the fear factor the conspiracy theory that the criminals and the enemies of our freedom are putting out there which we believe that the coming of the satellite radio will go a very long way in putting culpability where culpability is especially in those rural areas where they have used lies and propaganda to deceive certain individuals so we need those individuals to also cast their vote but as soon as we finish this first stage 
The second stage of voting will probably be different from what we have in the first stage. Now we are learning to know where we are going to make some amendments. So uh, those of you in the US, uh, you can take it upon yourself to uh, you know, make contact to those back home and help in buying data for them, for example, so they can help in, you can give each person you know a task to get you 1,000 votes, for example, and provide data for them. The rules have not changed, but because uh, there is problem with the data, there is problem with the internet, and this is the first time we are doing such thing, we know fully well that the internet is not accessible in Biafra land, not even in Nigeria. So it is already uh, used because we are using the electronic means is already a disenfranchisement on its own. But we have to do what we got to do to support those who will have the opportunity and the means to use their mobile phone to help others to vote. So it is a, it is a task I am giving to every one of you. And also it is a responsibility that every one of us must take. Why the Biafra government in exile and the de facto government in the homeland are providing uh, some gadget to selected electoral officials in each state, it is not enough. So we need to individually on our own help the government in making sure that the dream of having as many votes as possible before October, November is achieved. And that is number two. And then we go to the defense of the Biafra land. As you all can see, your support to the government in exile, your contribution has seen a total protection and defense of the Biafra territory that today there is no attack, there is no mass killing in Biafra land. It is the credit goes to you because you have made it possible. So the United States, Biafra in the United States, I would like everyone to clap for yourself because while other Nigerians are crying, indigenous people in Nigeria are crying, you are not crying. But remember, it has been taking a lot out of you. A lot of resources, a lot of resources, a lot of time, a lot of sacrifice has made it possible that people in Biafra land today are bragging that nobody can come there and attack and go free. And we are just starting. We have invested in defense of Biafra and we continue to invest. And I want every one of you to understand that when we are being faced with threat of extinction, it requires a lot of resources to make the enemy to understand that you can't come in and kill and go. And that particular message I believe today is very, very clear to the enemy that Biafra land is a no-go area. And that's why we are doing many things we are doing, which a lot of people will never understand. It is also the same way when every nation are displaying their military might, their military capability, their defense, uh, you know, capability is sending a message to the enemy that you cannot try us and we will deal with you. So even though we don't have aircraft, we don't have fighter jet. We don't have military tanks and all that. We have ground forces, bigger than Nigeria. We also have men who are more brave, more trained, even more experienced than those Nigeria terrorist army. And I don't need to be saying it because the result is there. So we are also sending messages to those who have been attacking other indigenous people in Nigeria killing them in masses. Two days ago, we were watching how they were running from Plateau, in Plateau State, from the community that hosts one of the universities there. And people were massacred. And everybody was watching. And what they do, and they have been doing for ages, is to video and be shouting and posting on social media, there is no help. Nobody comes to defend them. And don't forget, that we, the Biafra people, were once there. We were once in their shoe. We 
we were once seeing us being massacred and we make videos and share. We were once being chased away from our own community and our own villages only for us to share the video. We were once even advocating for people to always video and speak English so that when we post it out there on social media, the world will know what is going on. We have advocated for that when we were like them. But today, we are no longer doing that. Today, when the criminals and the terrorists come to kill, we have what it takes to defend ourselves. And if they succeed in inflicting any pain to us, we are also in the position to share or not to share because the capability to defend our land is there. And to those who have sabotaged the Biafra Defense Forces in their different villages, most of them have also paid the price of the sabotage. Because when the enemy come, before we will go there, they, more have, they may have inflicted number of degrees of damages in their community. And so many of them have repented and have realized their mistake. So, there is no sabotage. But knowing our people, who they are, and because of what Nigeria have inflicted in their brains, it is never going to end. The sabotage is something that we are going to face till the restoration of Biafra. And that's why when the sabotage comes, I am not very bothered because it is part of the struggle. It is not just because of Biafra. It is the sabotage is everywhere. There are countries that are sabotaging their own country today. So it is something that have to do with humans. And we can't eradicate it completely. But the good news is that when Biafra become an independent state, we have the solution. We have what it takes to end every sabotage, to make every single person become patriotic citizen through government policies, through inclusive governance, through equality, progress, equity, and justice. Nobody will have any reason to go against or feel neglected by the government, like what we see in Nigeria today. The neglect, the marginalization, the inequality is too much. And so, Last time, I also promised the United, the Biafra in the United States that the Biafra government is moving to the AU, the African Unity, or African Union, and we are approaching the Banjo Court. The Banjo Court, we are filing the application for reparation. That is going to be, in the next few days, this particular process will kickstart. And we are also activating the Article 20 of the uh, African uh, Charter on Humans and People's Rights. The Article 20 clearly state that all people shall have the right to existence. They, they shall have the unquestionable and the inalienable right to self-determination. And that's where we are today. It went for that to say, they shall freely determine their political status and shall pursue their economics and social development according to the policy that have freely chosen. So we have chosen our own policy according to what is enshrined in the African Charter, Human and People's Rights. Also, the Article 20, uh, Article 21 of the same Charter state, all people shall freely dispose of their wealth and natural resources. We have not given that right by the Nigeria state to dispose our wealth and natural resources. This right shall be exercised in the exclusive interest of the people. What is happening in Nigeria today is a complete violation of the African Charter Article 21. 
There has never been any time in the history of Nigeria that Nigeria government considered the indigenous people under which the natural resources that Nigeria is using to fund terrorism today is coming from. And in no case shall a people be deprived of it. Nigeria have deprived us from the time they discovered natural resources in Nigeria and which is located in Biafra land. This is what we are going to pursue simultaneously as we fight in diplomatic, uh, diplomatic way, international level, globally, and then of course, in defense of Biafra land, we are following Nigeria and fighting with using multi-dimensional approach. So those of you who are yet to purchase your ticket as a delegate to Finland, you have a limited time to do so because the limited number of people will soon, uh, we will soon get to that limit. And once that limit comes, it means you may not have the opportunity to participate in this historic event where the declaration of the restoration of independent state of Biafra will be declared in Finland. So the people of Biafra in the United States, remember to whom much is given, much is expected. You have given much to the Biafra Republic government in exile. And of course, our much expected uh, is what you are seeing today, where Biafra land has been sealed and protected under the watch and defense of the Biafra Defense Force, which include Biafra Liberation Army, Biafra Resistance Fighters, the Biafra Air Force, and Biafra Navy. The Navy of Biafra is very active in Bakasi Peninsula. The reason for Bakasi Peninsula is because of the experience of the Biafra War. We know exactly what Nigeria did to us and Cameroon during the Biafra War. The blockade of Biafra were very effective. They used Bakasi Peninsula to enforce the blockade of Biafra. So when you are hearing that rocket that is moving, it is only in Bakasi that the Biafra Defense Forces have used rocket. And you know, some of them are wondering, is this really rocket or what is it? Yes, we are using rocket. Because when they come to kill, they also come with RPG. I will need to have more superior response. That's why the explosion is being heard in Bakasi and no other place at this point. So it is going to be a uh, continue like that. And of course, with the help the alliance of Ambazonia, we are making sure that this particular alliance is yielding the desired result. So the Biafra Navy will continue to use rocket to make sure we delegitimize Nigeria and weaken this particular uh, area that we use for the blockade of Biafra. That's why what is happening there is that because a lot of you may have asked the question, why is the rocket, why is the explosion in Bakasi and all that? We are making a very big statement in Bakasi to tell them this time around there will be no blockade and it will never work. And that's why we are also investing on air defense. As I'm talking to you today, we can boast of air defense, anti-aircraft, many of them, and it will continue to come. So our investment on defense is increasing and as it increases it is also more responsibility as we need to feed those machines so this evening i am here again to brief you all with this little update of course there are many updates that i may not even remember which the cabinet may help me but if we begin to tell you what we have done within these two weeks uh, before I, that i came here you will never believe it but these are the most essential one that i believe that I need to update all of you to know the progress we're making. And then in the next few weeks, I will come here to give you an update on the Banjo court application, which, which I have just explained now. And um, before then, hopefully, that will be a very concrete uh, uh, update. And maybe you may have read about it even before coming on mainstream media. I welcome all of you. Thank you.
for your support. Oh, yes, you can see that we are moving. Uh, Biafra Liberation Army, Defense Force, all of them, they are on guard. Our land is not like the land of uh, other people like uh, Benue, Jaws, and all that. You don't leave your land to vacuum or in vacuum. There must be men on ground. And those men on ground must be serious. And those men on ground must be trained. And all those, those men on ground must be you know, equipped so that you'll be sure that, oh, this land will not be taken over by invaders just like that or by just a mere joke that the invaders will joke. They will now notice that uh, suddenly the land is porous and they will start bombarding, they will start chasing, they will start harassing until everybody run away from, uh, runs away from the communities and communities will be led by for them. No, 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 we will not allow that. So you must have to support what we are doing, support um, our liberation, you know, make your own donation and then pray for the men on ground. That's the support we need from each and every one of us. Thank you very much once again for your time on this very channel. God bless you all.